Hello and welcome to Quick Maths with Mr. Yon Zun. In this video, I will work out the Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 4 for the year 2024 and it is the second variant. Question number 1a. A fruit drink is made using 1.5 liters of apple juice and 450 milliliters of mango juice. Write the ratio of apple to mango in its simplest form. First, let us convert this 1.5 liters to milliliters. So that's 1.5 times 1000 is 1500 milliliters. And now let us simplify 1500 to 450 cancel the zeros and now divide by 15 150 divided by 15 will give you 10 45 divided by 15 will give you 3 and the ratio is 10 to 3 question part b 1 liter of fruit drink is shared between 3 cups the amount in the cups is in the ratio 9 to 6 to 10. Calculate the number of milliliters in each cup. So 1 liter is 1000 milliliters. Let us add the numbers given in the ratio 9 plus 6 plus 10. That is equal to 25. And then divide 1000 by 25 that's going to give me 40 so this is one part so if i multiply 9 times 40 that is 360 is my first part and 6 times 40 is 240 and 10 times 40 is 400 all right just to make sure you can add 360 plus 240 plus 400, you should get 1000. Question part C. A shop buys bottles of fruit drink for $3.20 each. It sells them at a profit of 15%. Calculate the selling price of each bottle of fruit drink. So we need to increase $3.20 by 15%. So 100% plus 15% is 115% and the decimal equivalent is 1.15. So now if you multiply 3.2 times 1.15, you will get your answer. So 3.2 times 1.15 is equal to 3.68. All right, let's go to question D. The number of bottles of fruit drink sold has grown exponentially at a constant rate of 2.5% per year. Five years ago, the shop sold 16,620 bottles. Calculate the number of bottles sold this year. So let us use the compound interest formula. So the number of bottles this year will be 16,620 times 1 plus r over 100 to the power of n. So here the n represents the time 5 years. r is the rate of interest 2.5. So that's going to be 16,620 times 1 plus 2.5 over 100 to the power of 5 and let's tidy this up a little bit 16,620 times 1.025 to the power of 5 and the answer to this calculation is equal to 18,804. So that's 18,804. 
Question part E. The bottles of juice are 18.5 cm tall. Correct to the nearest millimeter. They are stored on shelves. The distance between the shelves is 23 cm. Correct to the nearest centimeter. Calculate the lower bound for the distance d cm between the top of a bottle and the shelf above it. So here they are asking us to find this distance over here d. Since we are calculating the lower bound of the distance d, I need to take the upper bound of the top of the bottle and the lower bound of the shelf above it. So the upper bound of the bottle is equal to, now this is in millimeters, remember, but the height of the bottle is given in centimeters. 18.5 centimeters is equal to 185 millimeters and to find the upper bound we need to do because it is rounded to the nearest millimeter so 1 divided by 2 that's 0 0.5 and the upper bound will be plus 0 0.5 and that's equal to 185.5 now let us convert this back to centimeters. This is in millimeters. Back to centimeter will be 18.55 centimeters. This is my upper bound. And now let's calculate the lower bound of the shelf. If you look at the shelf is 23. It is already in nearest centimeter. So we don't have to convert anything over here. So the lower bound of the shelf is 23 minus, now what do we have to subtract? 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5, so minus 0 0.5 and that's going to give me 22.5 centimeters. Now we need to find the difference between the two, so 22.5 minus 18.55 and that is equal to 3.95. Let's move question number 2a. The diagram shows a straight line intersecting two parallel lines. Find the value of A and the value of B. Now first of all, since this is a transversal and it is a straight line, these two angles are on a straight line. So A is 180 minus 38. That's going to give me 142 degrees. And A and B are alternate angles because they are angles in a parallel line. So uh, B equal to A because they are alternate angles. So B is also equal to 142 degrees. Question 2, part B. Calculate the interior angle of a regular 12-sided polygon. So, the interior angle, the interior angle equal to 180 times n minus 2 all over n, where n is the number of sides. So, that's going to be 180 times 12 minus 2 divided by 12. This 180 times n minus 2 will give me the total of all the angles. So I just need one of the interior angles. So I'll divide by 12. And that's going to be 180 times 10 divided by 12. And that's 1800 divided by 12. So that will give me 150. So each interior angle is 150 degrees. In part C, the diagram shows a circle center O. Here is the center. The points M, N and P lie on the circumference of the circle. A, M, B is a tangent. This line over here, A, M, B is a tangent. Find the value of F and the value of G. Now to find the value of F, there is something called 
alternate segment theorem. Now the angle that's over here that lies between the tangent and a chord. Here is the tangent, here is the chord and that is equal to the angle subtended by the same chord in the alternate segment. So here we have the alternate segment. Therefore, uh, F is equal to 56 degrees alternate segment theorem. Okay, that's 56 degrees we have used over here. Alternate segment theorem. All right, and then to find the angle uh, G, let's go back. Angle G is right over here. Uh, this OM over here and OP, they are radius. So when the red eye, when the red eye and a chord over here, uh, they meet at the circumference. This makes an isosceles triangle. So this also has to be equal to G. And there is another circle theorem that you need to know to find the angle at the center. Angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. All right, so this angle over here has to be 112 degrees because this angle over here we found 56 degrees. So G plus G plus 112 equal to 180 degrees. So that's going to give me 2G plus 112 equal to 180 degrees. So 2G is 180 minus 112 and 2G is going to give me 60, sorry, 68 degrees and G is half of 68 which is 34 degrees. Question part D. The diagram shows a cyclic quadrilateral. Find the value of K. Now one thing that you need to know is in a cyclic quadrilateral the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So if I mark this angle right over here and label this angle as angle X. So these two angles, angle K plus X, K plus X will give me 180 degrees. Okay, this is the fact. Now before that, we need to find the value of X. So there you can see a small triangle over here. This is 24 degrees, the other one is 27 degrees. So we can use the angles in a triangle fact. So x equal to 180 minus 27 minus 24. And then x equal to 180 minus 51. And that will give me x is equal to 129 degrees. Now you can plug this value of x over here to find k. So k plus 129 equal to 180. k is equal to 180 minus 129 and the value of k is one, sorry 51 degrees. Alright, that's all for now. The remaining questions will be in my following videos. Thank you for watching.